Good evening guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vadim and today we will be continuing reacting slash analyzing entries from Eurovision 2019. Tonight we will have another favorite country of mine in Eurovision. It is France. Le Francais, mon ami, à mon ajou, les garçons. Vous voulez vous coucher avec quoi? I don't speak French. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's a small remark. I've been to Paris. That was the croissant and a little bit the coffee and the Eiffel Tower and chanson and everything is beautiful life is beautiful there as well uh, but let's go back to our business france it's beautiful it's beautiful all right i hope <laughs> we have to make sure this video is not going to be about beautiful and you know you know uh france is doing very great in eurovision to my point of view uh i like what they're presenting there uh, France is a country that has a personality, the way Italy does. I would say that France and Italy, they have a personality. And I think so does uh, United Kingdom as well. So what does I mean? What, what do I mean by have a personality? It's a country that um, somehow adds some elements that defines them in Eurovision Song Contest. And for me, uh, France, and I'm not referring to ethno, you know, to folk. I'm not referring to folk or ethno vibes. I'm just referring to the style, the way they are presenting their songs. And they uh, have managed to add some um, interesting added value to their performances. Because France, I don't know why, uh, but they, they even have a style in the music. For example, last year, Mercy. Oh, I like that song so much. The sound has such a structure. It was so fashionable, you know. I, I, I wouldn't, I didn't, I don't even know how to explain. It has, it's not only a style. It's just a fashionable style, uh, and you could clear that. Um, so there is some subtitles, something very interesting in the back of the sound. It could be a French, which also added quite a lot to the performance. But these small details in the sound. You know, this guitar and this back deep, you know, water sound. It just was so stylish, to my point of view. The sound itself, the sound, it so visionary. You know, you've li I, I was listening to this song and it was leading me somewhere. It was such a beautiful song and it was genial some sounds of deep water in the back i i don't understand i i don't think if you understand what i'm talking about but there is some deep deepness you know in this song some depth it's like still chilling you know it's like i was really feeling like i was floating on the water and the song the chorus it does sound like a screaming message, you know, it's something like screaming. Uh, I don't, I don't speak French at all. I don't understand French. So you need to un And this sound. It's like, it's just beautiful arrangement. It's, it's a high quality production, honestly. And I was feel, I, I felt so bad. Um, because of the France results, because they were my number one last year until the live performances. And the message, the message just conquered me. It was beautiful. And lately I discovered the lyrics of the song, sing about immigrants, about a girl who was, you know, brought to life on a boat, on a refugee boat. It's just like, it was very beautiful. It was a message. It was a fashionable, trendy song. It was this couple, Madame Monsieur, they, they both are looking so appealing, so human, so kind-hearted. 
and um, it was beautiful and uh, that's why I like it so much uh, last year and I, I, I was stupefied seeing the results they got and I was really really angered about that because even though they probably they did not deserve to be number one because it wasn't that wow effect and you know it wasn't but the message the song the originality the authenticity of the song it was beautiful the other song which also is amongst my favorite in eurovision it's amir uh jai cherche oh my gosh this song i'm still listening to this it's in my playlist it's so beautiful i don't understand the lyrics but it's so catchy it's so trendy like the melody of my song as you guys can see i am a terrible singer so don't be around in a karaoke club with me because <laughs> your ears will be smashed but it's it's a song which inspires me you know like you listen to this chorus and you know you want to just put on a smile and you want to go out and you know conquer the world it's the song which i listen to when i feel a little bit down or it's a song which I turn on when I need a support and Amir has managed for me to impress me so much with this song that you know I already feel like he's my brother <laughs> something like this and this song is legendary and again I felt so devastated to see him coming six only I would agree that his live performance was a little bit um, and probably the biggest problem of France I think it's the only exception in Eurovision where a country has to take care of the show and of the live performance. We had last in 2018 uh, the Belgium singer, um, Senec, A Matter of Time. It was such a beautiful song. It was in the style of Lana Del Rey. Uh, I like the aesthetics very much of the song. It was very, very interesting, very youthful, again, hipsterish. But uh, the, the live performance, it wasn't about her voice, it was about a lack of any show, of any message, of any content on a stage. So it is, I think, the problem of France. They are lacking a show on a stage. Another performance, which, uh, again, which is still having a huge impact upon me, it was obviously Patricia Cass. Oh, this woman, she's a legend. Uh, I, I know the name of Patricia Cass. I don't really know the movies she's been in. I know that she's very uh, popular. But this song was so emotional. Even though, again, I don't understand what she sings. But that view of her, you know, this face, the way she was staying on a stage, everything was so on spot. This posture she had, you know, she wasn't really dancing, but only, you know, at the end of the performance, she did some moves. But it's like the posture, the the legs, you know, the hands, the face, these beautiful eyes, ocean eyes that she's having. It's just, I was really, really very much impressed by Patricia Cass. Again, I think that they did deserve much more attention. And it, it was so French, you know, it was so French. And even now, looking at her, I feel like oh, I'm just conquered. The French girls are so beautiful and <laughs> I like the style and, you know, the everything the French culture brings. Again, Patricia Cass was also another highlight. Another song which uh, it's my guilty pleasure, but, uh, you know, it's not a guilty pleasure. It's... One of my favorite as well, Twin Twin Mustache song, the Mustache. Je ne sais, je ne pas. I like it. It it was funny, but at the same time, it was a very nice beat. In 2014, it wasn't you know a troll entry. It was a funny song, you know, a humorous song, which you don't really see very often, a good quality humorous song, generally worldwide. And that song was so good, so nice, I don't know why they got such a low uh, um, level again. 
it was very interesting and uh, of course ole hola was the other song uh jesse matador we have to accept it it you know 58 million it's a big number i don't remember i don't think they really got a high place in eurovision but you know i remember watching eurovision song contest top 10 and they are very often mentioned and they are amongst the top so this song is also good it's it's great it's another representative a song which characterize uh, france i would say mostly this is the um, it's very you know cheerful song you want to dance you want to have fun it's about vacation i don't know i look at i, I listen to the song i feel like about vacation about beach about the sun ale 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 hola ole Ale, 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 oh, tu, na, 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 ole. It's, it's a great song, it's very funny, it's very positive, good vibes, good quality as well. And being in top 10, it says a lot about the value of this song as well. It was Mercy, my favorite, it was Patricia Kass, my favorite, it was Amir, my favorite, it was Moustache, and Ole Ola. The other song was also very good. And as I've said, I like France. It After Ukraine, I think it's my second most favorite country in Eurovision uh, since 2006 and uh, till present. They're doing a very good job and um, I hope you, they will keep up with uh, this trend. Out of big five, I think France and uh, Germany uh, are the only two countries that really, really do their homework you know um, they are trying and they are giving different types of music they're giving different types of songs it's 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 really i can see that italy uh, or i mean i'm sorry france and germany are two countries out of big five who are really interested in this competition and um, i feel very bad about uk and uh, because i think you UK is doing the worst job so far out of this big five and I don't understand why because UK has a huge music industry we have Adele we have Sam Smith we have so many British singers who are popular worldwide I don't get how they could deliver such a poor quality songs not a poor quality but you know to some points to someone very um, bold songs I would say uh, but we'll speak about that in another video. So, what do we know about Bilal? Again, I think he is of an Arabic origin. No, no, no. So, Bilal Hassan, he is a French guy. He was born in France. His parents, his father is from Morocco, so he's a Muslim. And his mother is a naturalized French citizen. Um, all right, so because I know some controversies uh, regarding Bilal because he has uh, Muslim origins, he is also, I do believe, he's a gay, yeah, apparently, he's a gay orientation. So, um, as we all know, in you know, it's a general perception that Muslims and uh, homophobia doesn't really go along very well not homophobia but uh, homosexuality and the other thing is there's going to be an Arab origins homosexual going to um, Israel and another controversy is, to be honest doesn't come from me it comes from you know the world perspective from societies is that uh, it's kind of controversial to have an Arab homosexual performing in Israel considering the the fights and the the problems that Israel has with the Palestinian and with the Arabic world and with the Muslim world so this running a lot and then I've seen the videos where um, Bilal uh, was uh, outraged by the press media regarding some of his tweets in the past I think it doesn't really it doesn't matter it, it works very well for the artist because it kind of uh, attracts attention worldwide but i don't think this is really very much relevant at this moment 
However, I do appreciate the message which uh, France is sending now, you know, a Muslim homosexual to Israel. Obviously, I don't think it was an intentional move. Or maybe it was, we don't know. Conspiracy theories. Ta -da -da. It's interesting. Let's, let's see. Uh, as I said, I've never heard before. I just small parts, but I didn't really see the whole performance. I don't know. I wish he would have a video. But... I don't speak French, so I'm going to do my initial, my initial uh, reaction is going to be, uh, you know, without the lyrics. So I'm just trying to look from a perspective of um, the majority of telespectators. All right, guys, let's let's watch and listen to Bilar Roy. It's a video. Reminds me of the sound of Conchita Wurst. You know, this. It's in French language. I don't understand anything in French. So far, I see a guy. I think, yeah, I think it's. Oh, it's him actually. I couldn't recognize him without the. Oh, that was a wig. So it's a wig. So uh, we see him in the beginning. Uh, being a normal guy and then he makes a uh, he does a makeup and put on the wig and the glasses the wig and the glasses apparently it's something that characterizes a part of his style and personality image a part of his image in public and uh, he goes on a stage he goes to the microphone It's very nice. I have these goosebumps again. Wow. Okay, we have this. Da -da -da. I like it's. It kind of combines the most, you know, the highlights of the songs in Eurovision. It's like the building up, you know, a climax. And then we also had, you know, these playful uh, motifs. I like it so far. Uh, I don't hear, I know that he has some problems with the, his live performance, but I like his voice because it sounds like, you know, as if my friend is, you know, next to me and singing in a karaoke. So it kind of gives me a friendly, amicable vibes. I like, I like the chorus very much, actually. I like it. It's, I'm not rich, but I'm shining bright. I can see my kingdom now. So we see these audiences who is looking very negatively toward him. So I kind of see the message in here. He's performing with a wig and glasses on a stage in front of an audience who apparently doesn't like him. So probably he tries to speak about how he's not being accepted in the art community or, you know, in the music community. And he's trying very, very hard. So it's a song about the message, you know, about not to break, being broken down, you know, about being strong, confident. You know, but I like that he sings on a stage in a video with a smile on. <laughs> this is uh, his, you know, uh, uh, this crown, you know, the thing that it's, it was very clever. Um, so it was interesting that he's kind of singing about a problem, but with a smile on. So he's very positive about uh, the issues he is uh, facing. So we can say that he is being uh, treating this bad behavior with a, you know, a kind hearted attitude. Uh, with something that can be, you know, fixed 
and so on and so forth. I kind of understand the message. I like the song that I, I like the part in his church where he he sings that I'm not rich. Let me just check the lyrics now. I like because I, I don't speak French. So what what I understood is I like the I'm not rich but I'm shining bright. This is very interesting. It kind of connects with you know the social vulnerable parts of societies. I don't know if he's social vulnerable. I don't think he is. But you know, it's like about being a middle class or a lower class, excuse me, and uh, probably having these uh, Moroccans origins. I mean, he doesn't have them. His father has, but probably I assume that he wasn't the richest in the class or in his stage of life. And he doesn't see this as a problem, as an issue, um, because, you know, he is trying to express the brightness from within himself. So let's guys see the lyrics because it was unclear. All right. So the name of the song Roy means king. Interesting. Very interesting. So uh, he's singing about yeah, obviously because there is a crown. Uh, okay. So I am me, and I know I I will always be. I am free. Sure, I'm inventing my life. Don't ask me who I am. I am the same since I was very little. And in spite of looks, opinions, I cry, I go out, and I love. I love. Uh, I like the the thing, that, the word that he used, cry, because the word cry, I cry, it does give very deep emotional attachment already to um, Bilal, because you know it's very sensible. Let's say um, feeling of crying you put me in a box want me to be uh, like you i don't follow the codes people are disturbed a lot at the end of the day you cannot change me boo so let me fly i'm wondering if who is trying to put him in a box this is the societies and i, I think it, it is a society since in a video clip uh, we see these audiences who are very angered about him being on a stage or is that coming from the family that's interesting. That would be very interesting if he would make some references to who is trying to put him in a box. But I like that the the originality, because, you know, we all know about, you know, I want to be who I am, I was born this way, and this type of not uh, cheap messages. They're not cheap. They're very important and valuable messages, but they're not very authentic. But I like that he used the, the lyrics, let me fly, which kind of add some innovative idea to his message about being the way you are and let me fly it kind of express you know like yeah he doesn't want to be in a box he doesn't want to be restricted by some codes by some norms of the society uh, he wants to be free and expressed who he is and expressed what he believes in and express his creativity and art interesting I'm not rich, but I'm shining bright. I also like the part I'm not rich. It also uh, underlines some um, uh, insecurities, not of his, but some, you know, vulnerability. I can see my kingdom now. When I dream, I am a king. When I dream, I am a king. I'm not rich, but I'm shining bright. I can see my kingdom now. When I dream, I am a king. And I know even now, you try to take me down, it cannot break me. All these voices do like this, do like that. I don't look right through them. You will never remove my crown. Wow, you will never remove my crown. That's that's interesting. That's very beautiful, actually. You know, I can see my kingdom now. When I dream, I am a king. Uh, and you will never remove my crown. So it kind of, somebody tries to box him. And I don't know, I think probably it's either a society or a family. And he has a dream where he is ruling his own kingdom, right? And we can say that kingdom is kind of his life. A king means the part, person who rules the life. So in this way, he tries to say that his life is not going to be ruled by someone. 
and uh, he will be the one who's going to be in charge with ru ruling his life. But the, the thing that uh, it's interesting is that I dream. He doesn't say that I am a king. When I dream, I am a king. So probably he's not yet ready to, um, you know, uh, leave behind obeying the rules or obeying some norms or obeying some uh, restriction which comes from somebody. Uh, you try to take me down, you cannot break me. No. Nah. All these voices do like this, do like that. So it's like the people who tries to tell him how to behave. I don't look right for them. You will never remove my crown. I like the, 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 the expression, you will never remove my crown. I like how he connects his life with a kingdom, himself with a king, and then crown as... Uh, the possibility and the ability of controlling somebody. So in his case, he's in charge with who he is. Interesting. Okay, let's go next. Who are we when we hide, when we fight for free? Only God can judge you and me. We did not choose what we are. We choose our work, our hairstyle, our friends, our routine. Sometimes love too. It's make or break, but it's none of your business. All right, so it's then I'm not rich, but I'm shining bright. I can't see my kingdom now. Oh, I can't see my kingdom now. Oh, oh, I thought I can see my kingdom now. So he's thinking I can't see my kingdom now. When I dream, I am a king. When I dream, I am a king. I'm not rich, but I'm shining bright. I can't see my kingdom now. When I dream, I am a king. And I know even now, oh, you try to take me down and you cannot break me. All these voices do like this, do like that. I don't look right for them. You will never remove my crown. It's a beautiful, it's a really beautiful. It's a simple message, but it's not uh, of the less value. It's a very strong value. It's a song about a person who is going through some social abnormality, right? Because it's still very hard accepted, uh, this uh, homosexuality orientation, especially from a person who comes within our know, regions of um, very homophobic uh, cultures. I liked it very much in this song, the the king. Yeah, the title, because I like the kingdom, I like the king, and I like the crown. These three probably, let's say, the motives of the song, and they very very clearly expresses the whole message of the song. It's very smart, actually. It's very, very smart. It's a very authentic way of telling your, um, you know, pro me, pro myself uh, idea, you know, of self-realization, self-actualization. It's very interesting, really. The only thing is that I, d I didn't really like the video. The video was very simple. You know, they could have uh, expressed this idea more sophisticated the way Mahmoud did right with with the salty but again it's a very simple um, very, very often simplicity is um, sophistication so it is in this case um, it's interesting all right let's now try to see his live performance because that's apparently what is everybody outraged about so we have uh, Bilal Hassani Roy Khoi Finale Destination Eurovision 2019 oh okay wow so we see him being a small child that's very much connecting it's connecting to the words where he sings all right where he sings I am the same since I was very little. Very interesting. So he connects his past. And it's interesting because he kind of tries to express that homosexuality that he's thinking about. Because that would be the issues. Everybody, all those voices trying to say who, what he should do. He tries to say that it's not something that comes from a culture, from a society. It comes from who he was born. That's what he says in his lyrics. I am me from when I was born. I like very much, I'm not rich, but I'm shining bright. 
It's like, you know, the rich, it's about gold, it's about time, it's about the brightness, right? Shining bright like a diamond. But he says that I'm not rich, but I shine bright, meaning that his value, value comes from within himself. Very smart. I like that uh, step by step, I'm trying, I'm actually finding much more uh, meaning. Obviously, there is a um, French personality in this performance, these glasses. It's kind of like a French style. The aesthetics and this crown, very interesting. So the whole performance uh, relies on uh, the autobiography. Wow. It's like a very emotional performance. Actually, his voice is very good. I don't understand why people are very outraged. What, what I like, I like that when he sings verses where are the most vulnerable, vulnerable in his songs, right? Where he is singing about um, being a child, about inventing my life, about a code, about being disturbed by the people. Uh, and in his performance, you can see that, you know, by his eyes that he... He's being very emotional and he's being very... Mm. And he's being very anxious, very troubled by this experience because it's a part of his autobiography. But then when you go to the chorus, it's actually about his future because he says, I can see my kingdom. Referring that in the future, he's going to see his kingdom. And in his kingdom, he's referring to his life. And when he sings his chorus, you know, you can apparently see the smile on his face, uh, the, which express the positivity or the outcome. Bravo. It's, it's, it's not the best voice, but in this case, uh, the voice is soulful. And when I mean soulful, I don't uh, rely to the soul or jazz. Soulful, I mean, it's like, it's a very raw material. You know, it's like somebody who is next to you. You know, when you go to karaoke and you have that friend who never sing, and he starts singing and he, she, he or she doesn't really have, you know, the best voice. But you are very, very, you know, impressed that he can keep the tone, he, he can keep the timber, you know, he can keep the song and the, melodo uh, the melody, you know. It's the same way, like he's a YouTuber, he's not an opera singer and we don't really need opera singer because song is never only about the voice. You can have the best voice, but it, you don't have a message or you don't have an interesting sound or you don't have an interesting performance. You're going to fail. So you need to find a balance. I like because he's so young and this performance looks so millennial. It looks young. It looks very um, actual, probably because I'm from the same uh, age range. Um, and the message is so actual. Bravo, bravo. And at the end, they connected with him being small and he did the same gesture, you know, of putting on his crown. It's very interesting. I like that France is coming back with a message. Last year, it was about migration, you know, about this pain for, of refugees and other people traveling. It was beautiful. It conquered me. This year, they're sending the message about accepting who you are and fighting for who you are, which is a positive and which is an 
vital in our idea and message, um, you know, of not limiting, limiting yourself. And uh, if you are born in a specific way, keep the same message. I like it. I like at the end how they connect this, uh, you know, the part of the video from his childhood with him being on a stage. And it's kind of transition from where well, I can't see my crown, but now on a stage when you see his confidence in his eyes when he sings the chorus, you can see that he actually now can see his kingdom. And it's interesting. It's not the best voice, of course, but the message matters a lot. And... Um, the the personality of the singers matters a lot. The story also matters a lot. It's a personal story. It's uh, it's the same. I would say I would equal this with uh, Italy, with a Mahmoud, who also expressed a tragedy of his life. You know, of living alone or being abandoned by father, and that affected me so much. And in this case, also affected me so much because. Even though the lyrics, the song is very simple, but you know, sometimes in order for people to understand the message, you have to be very simple. And um, so in this case, you could hear the message or rather than, you know, the fakeness or the hypocrisy of being, you know, intellectually more superior by somebody else. It's beautiful. It's interesting. Um, I, don't really th I don't really think that this could make a top five though. But you know what, That's, it's a performance which has a message and I think having a message, having a social impact is much more important in these days. And I like that France is coming with a lesson to Eurovision with another year, another lesson. And that's, this lesson is very actual and this lesson has a value, has a need in our societies and you know, these educative uh, and informative uh, songs should be and are examples for many, many other countries we are lacking behind with the trends and uh, with the democratic views. It's a beautiful. I wish a lot of good luck to Bilal Hassani. It's a very interesting performance. It's a very interesting story. Um, he's very brave, you know, that he could speak about that. Excuse that he could perform about that. Uh, there is, again, I liked a lot, King, Kingdom and Crown, these three elements, you know, three words which expresses the whole life of Bilal and not only of Bilal. And it's, it's very sophisticated. It's very simple, but it's a very sophisticated, very, very complex idea in the message. Good job, France. Really, I'm very impressed. France. Oh, wait, France? Yeah, I'm just trying to pretend like, um, anyhow, French literate. Okay, even my English sucks, so. Uh, thank you so much, guys, being with me tonight, or today, or this morning, depends when you watch this video. It's interesting very much. I would like to thank France for electing Bilal. Um, he, deserves, he deserves his message to be heard. And please comment down below. What do you think about French performance, about uh, Bilal Hassani, about the outrage, about his message, about his success in Eurovision? Uh, what was the other candidates which you thought to be more relevant um, to represent France? France, France. Uh, please like, subscribe, subscribe, because by subscriptions you can stay in touch with uh, the content regarding Eurovision. And thank you so, so much for your support. It's been so many comments so far, so many views. And I'm very honored and very, very, very much delighted to see that somebody actually appreciate uh, my view. And I also read all your comments as well. They help me to shape my idea and my opinions regarding art itself. And um, thank you. I wish you a good day, a good morning, a good evening, a good night. I will see you in the next video. Shoo.